He demoted us like we a calculator. A calculator, which was shocking. Shocking the way they did it. Because and what hurt more was that Andy Hood looked at the performances of what we'd put together from January, beating Watford, going to Blackpool, beating Shrewsbury, the performance, even the, the Sunderland games, and we and Ipswich, and we were starting to really put a dent in this. We were going. We ain't having this. We're not having this, and that's what Tram is all about. As a as a community, we, we're just not having this. We, we'll no, we, we'll we'll fight this, or we'll we'll make sure that we come back from this, or and that's what Tram is. That's what it is. So it will roar again and come back from it, but it wasn't right. It didn't feel right. It just wasn't football for me. Mickey Mill and the party in the club for Dundee United, Mike Jackson was entrusted as the man to lead the team forward. This would prove to be a huge step for Jackson, as he would be stepping into the limelight for his first full-time managerial role. It would be a new look for the Super Whites with many big names departing such as Connor Jennings, Luke McCulloch and David Pergins. Plenty of new faces coming in to fill the gaps. Two of those new signings, Jay Speeding and James Vaughan, stood out and will prove to be an integral piece of business for Jackson and the team moving forward. A lot of a lot of us were hoping for maybe a bigger a bigger name or a more flashy name, but I think in the back of our minds we always knew that Jackson would be seriously considered just as you know the continuity candidate really. Um, so it, it might not have been the most exciting thing, but I think it was good, for, you know, from a from a continuity perspective, um, giving us a bit of stability, um, moving into obviously, you know, a new a new normal. Really, I think Jackson was the right man at the time, um, and when he was appointed, that I, I certainly had no sort of issues with that. It would be a less than ideal start for Jackson, which was one win coming in his first five games. And with Tramia not playing in front of any fans and empty stadiums all around England, things look bleak all around. As a result of their poor form, Tramia hovered just above the relegation zone in 18th place. I think we, we, we were probably a bit too cautious in some respects under Jackson. Um, obviously, it was his, you know, his first full-time managerial job, and I think, you know, it was a baptism, baptism of fire, really, in terms of you know everything he, he inherited in terms of the um, you know, the pandemic, as we've said, and the, the situation at the club. I think it was probably you know trying not to lose sometimes rather than going out to win, um, and I think. Obviously, that sort of mismatched with the, the fans' expectations because, you know, we're back in, in League Two, a lot of fans for us, unfairly. Um, and, you know, we wanted us to go out there and really make a statement from the off and just, you know, hit the ground running and, 
take the ball by the horns, really. The, the start of the season was so hit and miss. You know, we looked good in patches. We looked really poor in places. It was square pegs in round holes. You know, the, I don't think the players knew exactly what the roles were. There were substitutes made after 20 minutes. It just... It didn't sing out that anything was sort of consistent or, or, or what we've been become accustomed to the last few years, if you like. As a whole, as a collective, we all have to take responsibility. Uh, it wasn't how we wanted to start it. And if I'm honest with you, I think the first, that first 10 games really probably put us on the back foot to even try and get in ourselves in the automatics. Or We were aiming for, for draws on the roads and we were aiming just to not get beat. Um, you know, and that that ultimately backfired. I think when we just we were inviting pressure on in games, um, especially towards the end of games. And I think, you know, Jackson as well. He was he was making a lot of um, a lot of mistakes with team selection. So he'd make a lot of subs in the first half of games, which just suggests you know he's he's got his tactics wrong from from the off really. Um, so maybe it was just yeah, maybe it was just a bit a bit stretched too far from the job. Every game in League Two is tough. Um, and you have got to attack. If you don't attack, you don't score goals. Well, you, I know it's a Michael Owen phrase, but you're not going to win games. And there just wasn't enough oomph going forward. Um, the tactics changed completely from, from when Mickey Mellon was there. Um, obviously, Mickey Mellon has said Jacko did a lot under his reign, but from, from what I've seen as manager of Tramia Rovers for Jackson, I don't think he was the tactical brain in the, inside that Mickey Mellon room. I think even Jackson will admit himself now he was the wrong person at the right, uh, sorry, the right person at the wrong time. I wouldn't be surprised to see Jackson um, sort of shine in the future as a manager. He just needs a little bit more of um, training under his belt. You know, it's a, it's a big, big step going from assistant manager to manager. Following the departure of Mike Jackson, Ian Dawes would be stepping up from his role as assistant manager to interim manager. Speaking to the press, he said, everyone was desperate for the gaffer to work, but unfortunately it did not work out like that. Even on Sunday, everyone was in a low point, but football is what it is. The big thing for us moving forward was the players being able to become a team on the pitch, like a team with and without the ball, and to play more relaxed and be more positive. That level of positivity that Dawes tried to instill into his team seemed to work wonders. And with Andy Parkinson as his right hand man, Tramia were a breath of fresh air. While not perfect, they were getting good results under their belt, with three consecutive victories coming their way, including a final hammering of Grimsby Town, the relegation worries that lingered just weeks ago now looked a world away, with things looking up at Prenton Park. Dawson Park, he did an incredible job, like steadying the ship. And I think, in a way, it was it was it put the owners in a difficult position, really, because you 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 sack your manager, uh, you put sort of temporary ones in charge. You think, okay, they can they can take the next one, two, maybe three games. And obviously, they, they just started winning and winning well, and there was a huge uplifting performances. It wasn't just, you know, uh, we were looking a little bit better. We looked a, a lot a lot better. Like obviously when a caretaker comes in, um, you know, as the name suggested, they're to just sort of stabilise things, aren't they, really? Um I think like we weren't expecting too much to be honest. We're just looking, I think as fans, we were looking at the, the next manager, you know, who who's out there, who could we get? But you know, in the meantime, obviously they did a great job and it's um, you know, they really turned things around and changed the style of play and stuff. So it was um you know, it was really interesting just to see, you know, how they got so much more out of the same group of players, really. Um, so yeah, it was it was refreshing to see that. I think. After a run of three consecutive wins, Tramia rose up the league, 
to sit in 13th position. As action continued on the pitch, Mark and Nicola Palios worked hard behind the scenes to locate their ideal candidate, who they believed can lead Tramia forward. Keith Hill was the man chosen and he immediately looked towards promotion come the end of the season, citing the unbelievable network that the Tramia community has. He maintained that the fans, once they return, will be excited by the team's performances and only grow to love the club even more. Whoever the manager was coming in was on a little bit of a hide into nothing in terms of the run of form we were on. I mean, what what team is like looking to employ a new manager after winning what was it seven or eight games on the bounce? A lot of people saw saw some big names linked, maybe you Nigel Adkins and Danny Cowley, for example, and thought that's that's who we're after. But they, I don't think they were ever realistic, if if I'm honest, and um. I think they would have been a long shot. And so with the team winning, maybe those big names being thrown about, maybe some fans were sort of underwhelmed. I don't understand that. Let's be honest, he's got experience of getting promoted from League Two. He, he's he been there and done it. Um, at a similar club with Rochdale. You know, they are a similar club to Tramia. Um, you know, they're pretty big in, in that League Two. Um, and, and he got them up. And that will definitely have been in the Palios' thinking. But... I think the timing of it was was slightly wrong. I think you wait for a defeat or two to do that. Um, and I think it might have shocked the players as well because Keithill didn't have the best of starts. Keith Hill arrived on the back of newfound success on the doors of Parky. And a tough start to life at Tramia only hampered his chances of winning over his new support. A 1-0 winner home to Carlisle helped his chances and probably calm the early nerves. This three points was followed by another victory away to Oldham, thanks to a first half James Vaughan goal. However, a 3-1 loss to Warsaw halted Tramia's five-game winning run in the league, and a 5-0 loss to Exeter just a week later was a bitter pill to swallow. While Hill tried to settle into life at Prenton Park, he had to quickly find a way to get the best out of his team as the new year approached. It wasn't an awfully great start for Keith, if I'm honest. As much as I'd like him and as much as I wanted to defend him, initially it was quite tough. I mean, those months, November, December, January, were tough on him. I mean, after the run they went on under Dawes and Parkey, obviously to go from, I think they were just outside the playoff places, under Dawson Parker, they dropped down a bit. And obviously, so that was a bit of a difficult start for him. I think with, with Hill getting the job, I was assuming Dawson Park, he mustn't want it because surely they'd have, surely the owners and they themselves would have been happy to just carry carry on that sort of good feeling, that good momentum uh, for the rest of the season. So I can only assume that they must have said, you know, no, we're not, we're not managers we, we, and we don't want to be. Since the 11th of February, Prenton Park remained an empty venue, but the Super White Army, just like all fans around the country, only able to follow their team from their own home. For the first time in 266 days since their last league outing at Bloomfield Road, Tramia could once again hear the roar of the cop as 2,000 spectators were able to cheer Keith Hill's men in the venue. It would, however, not end in victory, but the fans in attendance were still very grateful for the opportunity, despite the results, as many others around the country were not as fortunate. It's a, it's a big stadium, and I think we were only allowed 2,000 fans in, and it was separated across three different stands, so it was, it was hard, to be honest. To, it didn't feel like, really, that we were cheering the team on it. It was just... It was almost like the atmosphere of like a friendly game or something like that, where people are sort of just happy to be there. It was good, don't get me wrong, to, to get in and watch the footy and stuff, but uh, and watch it live rather than on, on iFollow. But um, it didn't sort of feel like we were truly back 
uh, if that makes sense. Uh, for me personally, I love nothing more than playing in front of a crowd, in front of fans every week. Um, and then when we did get the, get a chance to experience the fans, the the the, 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 the it was electric, it was it was fun, it was loud, it was it was a great atmosphere. And I'd been there as a kid, I'd been there as a teenager watching some of them special nights. Then the the cup runs the Tramia went on, so I knew what their fans the Tramia were all about. It's a club that thrives on on the connection with the community. Um... I think even even though all the off-field stuff that the club's done has been brilliant and you know the community work, I think we are lacking that sort of you know that bond just between the fans and the players. You know, you never know in a game if something goes wrong or you go a goal behind. There's nothing better than a crowd to pull you back into the game when they're supporting you. And it's one thing watching an eye follow, but it's just you know you can't get that, you can't recreate that passion and that connection. As Tramia and the rest of the whale happily wave goodbye to a strange and confusing 2020, expectations were mixed as 2021 approached. Tramia had enjoyed the roller coaster season so far, and as Christmas arrived, they were treated to 13th position, having made that their own for the last month. Keith Hill, however, never placed his presence under the tree, as he had planned a much more special surprise for January. Tramia enjoyed an incredible turnaround in 2021 as they embarked upon a historic run. First they held a Forest Green Rovers to record a 3-2 win. Next came rivals Bolton who they beat 2-1. Harrogate fell victim to Woolery and Vaughan as they picked up three consecutive home wins. Woolery bagged the winner in a 1-0 win at Morecambe before Paul Vale were brushed aside in a 3-1 victory. A blip away to Stevenage was followed by a draw to Oldham before Tramia responded well to pick up a late winner at Carlisle riding that momentum to breeze past Leighton Orient. An early Feeney goal was enough to claim all three points at Newport before Crawley Town stole a 1-0 win at Prenton Park. Tramia, however, recorded a win away at South End, making it nine wins from a possible 12, entering one of the best form spells in Europe. Keith Hill's men had climbed the mountain, and for the first time this season, they were on course for automatic promotion, as they now sat in third place. That period we had at the turn of the year, you know, it was it was really, um, you know, we're playing some some great stuff. You could begin to see, you know, what he wanted to implement really in terms of passing football and, you know, players sort of rotating in and out of positions. Things just clicked. He it, it sorted out his formation correctly. It got the best out of his players. If you're continuously winning over a period and drawing and winning and drawing and winning, going unbeaten, you, your confidence does gain. So you're going into games believing that you're going to be on a good run, you're going to play well, you're going to do well. It just really fell into place over a certain five or six weeks. And that obviously helped them push up the league. Well, we found the formation and identity that worked for us. And we, we went for it and it seemed to work. And as I say, a big point for us was of, of our main we had a good core of the squad that were down the centre of the pitch that were experienced enough around the pitch and we had the young boys around us working with us. So, yeah, it just seemed to click and I say Keith got the best out of everyone in that, in that incredible run that we done on. For the first time in a while, the Super White had a cup competition to shout about as Wembley beckoned in the distance. You know, it was we kind of started, it was like, yeah, let's just take it as another game, give the fringe players a little bit of a go. Then as time goes on and you start winning games and it breeds a little bit of confidence and you think, you know, we're not doing so bad here. And then, you you know, you play against your, your under-21s teams, your Leicesters, um, and, and you put a bit of a performance in and you think, hmm, where, where are we going with this? And then all of a sudden we're on Sky for the semi-final and we put on a performance like that. And you think... Yeah, do you know what? This competition actually hasn't been all that bad for us. 
there was no pressure on the players. And I think then when we started stringing games together and, you know, we, we won on penalties against Wigan and things like that, and you go, going, we're actually doing all right in this. You know, the league form was decent at the time. And you go, you know, we're beating everyone or, you know, we're getting results everywhere. You know, this is a good thing. And then in beating Peterborough, which has been such a bogey team, I was like, we've got a chance here. With that cup run, but obviously we kept going and kept going. And when it became apparent that we had a very good a very good opportunity to get ourselves there, it was apparent that we wanted to push and get to Wembley because you don't want to go all that way and then finish the, the, the hurdle. Heartbreaking that the fans can't go to Wembley. You know, a Wembley visit doesn't matter what it's in. You want to be there. You want to put your colours on and you want to back your club. Um, so it was, it was a bit of a, a tough pill to swallow in terms of sitting in your living room watching it with those around you. So that for, for a fan and certainly a diehard, it, it must have been, and it was for me, torture to watch it. Yeah, I, I, it certainly helped us sort of, you know, giving us a little bit of momentum going into league games as well. So it, it's not been a bad thing, just bad that we can get to Wembley to watch. Prince and Park South was calling and a date with Sunderland was set. Fans would not be in attendance, but the Super White's love affair with the hollow turf of the English capital continued. It's not Wembley, it's Prenton Park South, isn't it? <laughs> and it is a special place with special memories for that football club I mean, obviously, to go up to in a row. That was a major achievement under Mickey and those days, those wins there, they can never be taken away from that club. Andy Parkinson was very open about how the media depicted Tramia heading into the final. He said he expects Tramia to be the underdog, but that's been the same for the last 20 years during big games. It's a role that Tramia play well, but he hopes they will be the victorious underdog come the final whistle. I was chatting with some supporters from both sides in the week. They said that they were planning as if they were going to the game today, going through their usual superstitious rituals before kickoff, even enjoying the same brand of pre-match beers with their mates online, of course, rather than in person. We do wish you football fans were here with us. The Wembley final should never be taken for granted this year more than most. The question is, who's going to make it their final? Chance here for Linda Gooch. Tranmere Rovers cut apart by Aidan McGeady's pass. Tranmere will be disappointed for the hard work that they've consistently gone through in that first half and begin this second half. Tranmere Rovers have won many admirers during this cup run games which on paper they simply shouldn't have won. They can leave here with much to be proud of, but Sutherland will be leaving with the trophy. gave a really really good account of ourselves and I think again that would have been an opportunity for the fans to show their appreciation to the players for for like you know giving it their all and and sort of playing to their maximum. It was just that one moment where we kind of relaxed a team like Sunderland are gonna punish you. If you're just a little bit more clinical who knows where um where, where that result might might have gone and but I don't I don't think the players had anything to be sort of disappointed about I know they lost the final but the performance on the day they're playing against higher opposition and a massive club in Sunderland as well they've got some really good players so the fact it was only 1-0 it wasn't 4 or 5 I think showed how well we've been playing 
And that was kind of something where I was kind of going, everything's going all right at the minute. All right, we lost, but 1-0. So a club from a higher league, you know, it, it could have been a lot more and it wasn't. Fortunately, on the day, it wasn't to be, but we left that stadium with plenty of confidence in the way that we played and the way that we represented ourselves and represented the club too. Grimsby Town secured a 0-0 draw just three days post Papa John's final. Tramia secured three points thanks to a Nugent and Lloyd penalty combo. A theme of draws began to emerge as Colchester clung on to share the honours. Mansfield Town also snatched the late equaliser to snap away Tramia's three points. Draws turned to defeats as Cheltenham hammered Keith Hill's men 4 0 on the road. Former forward Paul Mullen helped Cambridge United secure a point at Brenton Park. No goals as Scunthorpe United only heaped on the poor run of form. A surprise loss away to Warsaw's stunned Tramier, and fans started to become restless at the thought of missing out on promotion dreams. Keith Hill came out to defiantly support his players, downplaying the poor run of form as a difficult spell insisting the group of players had to collectively come through the storm together. Through the poor run of form, Tramia clung on to their fifth place spot, but only just. You know, the, the second half of the season, you know, our form has really sort of bottomed out again, which um, you know, it's disappointing to see. So, yeah, I mean, you can probably look at that Wembley game and just say, you know, that was probably a bit of a turning point, really, in terms of the momentum. Post Wembley, they've not had the results which they've wanted. They've not really been able to push on, which has been a shame. Which has been a shame, obviously, because that squad's very capable and obviously getting a promotion. We're doing on a fantastic run with the players that we've got, the squad we've got now. So it's the same players. Again, you know what does it help? When you're getting beat, you've got to have that mindset that you're going to start winning. No clouds. I think at times we, we, we try to overplay it. It was overkill, certainly in our half of the pitch. It was 25 touches. We went nowhere. The ball went forwards and there was nothing. It wasn't sticking. He was trying to fit all players into the team that he wanted in there not necessarily all in the, the correct positions. You're not going to win every game. I even get that. But you know there's ways of losing. You can have chances after chance. You can play well and come off the pitch and the supporters will go, he's done well there. But for some reason, we've been sort of, I'd say, carrying four to five plays. You cannot do that at this stage of the season. One big missing piece of the Tramia jigsaw was James Vaughan. The forward was sidelined with a knee injury in late February, and since then the Super Whites have picked up just three wins from 12 games. James Vaughan has been a massive, massive loss for Tramia. Um, the goal's dried up, and I, I think you shouldn't say teams are a one-man team, but for Tramia, they are different without James Vaughan. If I'm honest, I think with the way that we played, a lot, a lot of things did go through James. Um, we he was our main man up front to get us going forward to get us building. Obviously, we brought David Nugent and Kane Mullery as well. They're they're very good players, but they're not the same way that James plays. Uh, about his hold up play and bringing people into the game. Kane, 
Kane's form was flying with Vaughan because he was playing with someone that he seemed to join his partnership up with. Uh, and the experience of Vaughan had too. You can't buy experience in that in that level. James Vaughan would create and score his own goals. Paul Lewis and David Nugent need the service. That's the difference. With four games left to go and a promotion spot not yet secured, Keith Hill highlighted just how worrying football is on the back of 12 losses this season. Bradford City. Barrow. Forest Green Rovers. And Colchester United stood in front of success or failure. A great effort by Danny Lloyd saw his cross turned into O'Connor's own net as Trammy recorded their first league win in a month. A Nugent header from a Feeney cross was enough to edge out Barrow at home. Forest Green Rowers proved a step too far for Hill's men, but Keane Amara scored the goal of the season contender in added time. A 0-0 draw to home to Colchester saw the season done and dusted. It was enough to secure a playoff place, but there was very little to shout about given how Trammy had ended the season in such a negative way. A disgruntled Keith Hill pulled no punches in his final post-match press conference of the regular season, highlighting the difference in his team's form post-Wembley. He said he does not know why the performances have dipped, but believes his players have eased off in training, believing they are already good enough to win some matches. Hill's words certainly left a mark. And just three days later, he was relieved of his managerial position. Chairman Mark Palios said despite success on the pitch, coming in the form of the playoff position, as well as reaching the Papa John's final, the entire season is now distilled into two games. He continued, saying, I have to do what I think gives the club the best chance of achieving promotion. And I've reluctantly come to the conclusion that means making the change before the semi-finals begin. The sacking sent shockwaves to all those connected to the club, especially with such a huge occasion on the horizon. I think we've seen towards the end of the season, the players weren't really playing for the manager. It didn't seem at times. I don't think he just lost the dressing room. I think he's lost himself a little bit. The way they've been playing the last few months, they haven't been playing chances. So they're thinking, if we don't change something now and we're just going to put the same tactics, the same players on the pitch, we should have done something if you don't get promoted. Yeah, it is the wrong time from an outsider looking in because you're thinking you, you know, you've got your three games away from promotion. Why sack your manager? But... We're sacking it, sacking him because it needed to be done. And the Palios has realised that, realised that they didn't have the fans backing. A lot of the lads, no one's seen it coming. We didn't find out until we went to the training that day and then it'd been announced. Um, do you know what I mean? The the chairman felt it was the right decision to make and he made it. Um, there's not really much I can say about it. We literally finished the season and we, were, we finished the game on the Saturday and he was gone by the Tuesday. It's a fresh start for all the players, and I'm sure Dorsey and their parking will bring them back in, let them know under no circumstances to leave any note on that pitch and give it your all for two, possibly three games if you get to Wembley. For everyone else looking in, it's the total wrong time, so again, we've got a point to prove now. You know who to deal with, the players know who to deal with, the manager knows who to deal with. It, it should be a, a very positive move, I really, really hope so. Dorsey sat us all down to his mind and said, listen, again, the chairman's made a decision that he felt right for the club moving forward. Uh, we can't affect it now. There's nothing we can do about it. And just said, right, we've got two games to work hard to. We've got two games to work hard, work forward to and ones that we need to go out and attack. We've got a great opportunity at home and away and a chance to get to Wembley and get out of this league. Um, 
and we just worked for seven days on working on how we could play in that first game of Pretton Park, and that was literally we shut out anything that was going on around us or outside of the outside of the um, outside of the ground, and we just got on with work. With such a huge prize at stake, the fans quickly got behind doors. And the incident manager noted how important the fans will be at Prenton Park. He said that everyone was united in the goal of getting the club back to League One. And that he and his players will do what they can on the pitch, but pleaded with the fans to enjoy the occasion and be as loud as they could. An early Morecambe goal killed Tramia's chances as Knight Percival acted quickest to tap the ball home. Just four minutes later however, Peter Clark leaped like a salmon to head the ball home, as the fans in the cop went wild with hope. Tramia was sucker punched in at a time of the first half. The defence switched off and McAlinden poked home despite question marks around offside. Tramia dominated much of the remaining 45 minutes but just couldn't find a way into the net, leaving all hopes pinned on the second leg. Ian Dawes believed in his players and ensured fans that they believe they have enough to go and win the second leg and the tie was won. Celebrating a goal which puts them right back in this tie. Vaughan right on the line. There it is! Delirium for Morecambe! The home side heading to the home of English football. I think as a club, um, Tramia are in a really good position financially, I think. You know, relative to other clubs, certainly, um, at our level. But we've come out with a, you know, was set to come out the pandemic a, a lot better than a lot of clubs and you would hope that you know we can use that to our advantage. Whoever comes into the club must obviously have that connection with the fans and I'm sure that whoever does come in, whoever Mark chooses of course, will obviously have that connection with the fans. We're still in the football league and it's still you're rebuilding for a you know a, an automatic promotion charge rather than you know, being sort of uncertain whether you're even going to get in the playoffs in the National League going back, you know, a couple of years. So, yeah, it's, it's you know, in the moment you are sort of disappointed and hurt. And when you take a step back, though, there's a lot more to be sort of happy about on the bigger picture, I think. Well, they'll certainly be hoping to have that challenge. And it's just, like, obviously, because, like, the transfer market is still how it is. It's still obviously quite inflated and still up in the air. It's, it's just all about getting those targets in and obviously trying to build the squad from that. We fell short, so I think that alone should drive, drive people on, drive new players coming into the club, even lads who may stay, or I'm not too sure, like, well, obviously with regards to people staying or going just yet, uh, but whoever's staying, whoever's going, but even new lads who are coming in, that this club wants to be around the promotion. Uh, we've been close, but we want to go one step further next season, so that's our aim. Yeah, we're desperate for some good news, and. Um, for me, Mickey Mellon coming back in, it's like a full circle for Tramir Rovers. You know, he left at the start of the pandemic when no fans were allowed into Prenton Park. And then um, when, when they are able to, to get it up to full capacity, he will be back in Prenton Park. So it's, it's kind of a fairy tale, really, for him to return. There was only ever one man on everyone's lips for the job. And Mickey Mellon was once again back at Prenton Park. He spoke about his excitement at meeting the fans and the people of Birkenhead once more and emphasised his intention to kickstart the momentum to get Tramia back to the force they should be. He knows what, it, he knows what it's about to work at this club and I'm really looking forward to going in in the summer and working with him. Um, whoever he brings in, 
great. I'll trust, obviously, we trust him that he, he's the right people for the tram here and, and right, right people for the club that want to fight for the badge. And um, yeah, as I say, there's nothing, nothing but things to look forward to. So bring on the season next season and hopefully things can be more positive. Johnny King's obviously got a statue outside the ground, so hopefully Mickey will be thinking you know, probably make room for one for him in the future. He knows the area, he knows the club inside out, he knows the fans, he knows the chairman. So I'm obviously really positive about it. Clearly loves the club, loves the community. There's someone that is very much in us. It's not a they, it's not the fans, it's us, it's Tramia. There's always that say, isn't it, don't go back. But I think in this case, um, the, the situation is right and it, it, it does feel like a good fit again.